Coming up on Ag Week TV, it's been a spring of weather extremes from drought to storm damage. The Biden administration reverses their stance on WOTUS and the RFS. USDA and lawmakers work to improve competition in the meatpacking business. And a program to educate the public about pork production changes course. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Michelle Rook. This week's show comes to you from the Sand Hills Ranch Expo in Bassett, Nebraska. We're glad to be back after a year off due to COVID. This is the largest ranch-oriented trade show in the country and features state-of-the-art products and services for the ranch community, from cattle handling equipment to haying products. Plus, it's managed by volunteers, so the proceeds can be given to local community organizations. And news, the Biden administration plans to revise the definition of waters of the United States under the Clean Water Act. EPA and the Corps concluded the Trump administration's navigable waters protection rule is causing significant environmental degradation and reducing clean water protections, particularly in arid states. Farm Bureau led the fight against the Obama-era WOTUS rule as their definition of navigable waters and femoral streams put almost every foot of land under federal jurisdiction at a cost to farmers. Scott Vanderwall says they're prepared to go to battle again. And we think we've got a, a real good middle-of-the-road rule that's both good for the environment, the water, the air, and everything, and, and it also allows us to operate and, and use some common sense. So we'd really hate to change it. Last Wednesday, the Justice Department filed a motion in a case in Massachusetts requesting remand of the rule without vacating it. That sets in motion a process to replace the Trump-era rule and reconsider the existing definition. New rulemaking will be underway soon. The administration is also reportedly considering ways to provide relief to U.S. oil refiners from the renewable fuel standard. Biden is getting pressure from labor unions and U.S. senators, including from his home state of Delaware. The RFS requires them to blend billions of gallons of biofuels into their fuel annually or buy credits or RINs from those that do. RINs were recently at their highest level in the program's 13-year history, and refiners say that threatens to bankrupt them. Biofuels and farm groups are expressing frustration with the administration's 180 and say it runs counterintuitive to the push for climate change policy. Since the RFS might cause them to go up a little bit because of short supply of, of some of our renewable fuels, it comes into politics and how do we not lose votes over what is right. The small refinery exemptions granted over the last few years have already caused significant damage to the biofuels business. Meanwhile, USDA released COVID relief for the ethanol industry this week. They announced more details surrounding the Pandemic Assistance for Producers initiative. $700 million is designated for biofuels producers and is planned for implementation within 60 days. Some producers have received badly needed rain, while others continue to struggle with extreme drought. We take a look around the region in this week's Ag Week cover story. Stutzman County Extension agent Alicia Harstead says in East Central North Dakota, problems started with dry conditions last fall and winter. Then spring brought drought, a late freeze, heavy rain, strong winds, and even hail for some. Many growers had to replant soybeans, and some south of Jamestown are even looking at a third planting. The uh, disappointing part is uh, how the spring started. It looked like we're going to have a really setting up for a really good crop. I think it just kind of depends, um, too, on what crop you're talking about and then also what kind of emergence they had. Jared Hagert farms in northeast North Dakota. He's had some rains this season, so he's in better shape than many, and his farming practices have spared him some of the damage from this season's high winds. We've uh, converted a lot to, to no-till, minimum till, so... Uh, uh, we were fortunate that way that the, the stands weren't impacted as much. They still got wind whipped and, and still had to live through it with everybody else. Um, and some of the spots that didn't have, uh, have cover um, were blowing. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Livestock auction barns have seen increased cattle numbers in recent weeks with the continuing drought. North Central North Dakota has had some of the region's worst conditions. Michael Pates visited with a producer there who fears he may have to liquidate some of his herd if they don't get relief soon. In our pastures, low spots are green, high spots, they look like a summer fallow field. They're just brown and it's not a pretty sight. 
Kevin and Carol Friddle were a young married couple just getting started with their family farming the last time they saw conditions this dry. You know, in 88, we had enough moisture to get our crop started. It just didn't do anything after that. But this year, we can't even get our crop started. It's just so dry, it won't even, we can't even get it to come out of the ground. The Frittles have a commercial Angus Simmental cow-calf herd of about 170 cows. They usually keep cows into the fall and background feed them for marketing in February or March, but this year they were critically short on hay and buying feed may be prohibitively expensive. The dryness, the worrying about fires and the crops and the cattle, and I mean it's all, it's worrisome. They also raise canola, pinto beans, soybeans and wheat on about 1,800 acres. Worst case scenario, we're going to have a half a crop, a partial crop, and it'll be just enough to where we won't be able to collect crop insurance. I mean, that'll be just a, a wreck. Kevin says even regular rains might not help much at this point, but he hopes it doesn't mean he has to make a major change to his operation. I want to keep my animals, but I don't know if I can or should. In Knox, North Dakota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. This past week, he sold 30 of his oldest cows. USDA is releasing over $1 billion in payments to qualified producers who suffered losses from 2018 and 2019 natural disasters. Payments will go to approved applications for the Quality Loss Adjustment Program and those who have already received payments through the Wildfire and Hurricane Indemnity or WIP Plus program. The program opened in June and farmers can apply at their local FSA office. Coming up on Ag Week TV, some North Dakota farmers could have a new revenue opportunity. Superior Grain Equipment offers you the industry's best dryer and grain handling equipment. So make the superior choice and get higher quality grains, test weights, and prices while using half the energy. Superior Grain Equipment. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. Hi, neighbor! Oh, I know you didn't ask me to, but I grabbed your mail for you while you were out of town. Uh, this one was marked urgent, so I opened it for you. It's your bank statement. Are all those charges right? I highlighted the bottom of page three where you can sign up for e-statements. This isn't my mail. <laughs> e-statements with Cornerstone Bank. Keep nosy neighbors at bay by switching today. Challenges, we all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. Superior Grain Equipment is committed to quality and service. Protect your bottom line and your future with superior quality, protection, and reliability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. And what can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvest. The implementation of a carbon market may mean a new revenue stream for growers and producers. At an Ag Roundtable with farm group leaders this week, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum said a carbon market could allow farmers to get paid for what they're already doing. How it would work is the grower would be paid for practices like absorbing and storing carbon in the ground. In turn, that becomes a carbon offset for another company or a person emitting carbon somewhere else. 
there's a whole industry that's going to be created around CO2 and in North Dakota we can play in a very and very important role because we've got the, the geology to store it, we've got the resources to utilize it. Through this opportunity, Burgum says North Dakota could be carbon neutral by 2030. The Senate Act Committee called for hearings to address the anti-competitive practices in the meatpacking industry. At the same time, several farm state lawmakers introduced the Meatpacking Special Investigator Act. It would create the Office of the Special Investigator for Competition Matters within USDA's Packers and Stockyards Division and provide the tools needed to step up enforcement of the Packers and Stockyards Act. The division would have subpoena power and coordinate with DOJ and the Federal Trade Commission. USDA also announced it will begin work on three proposed rules to put teeth in the PNS Act. One provides clarity to strengthen enforcement of unfair and deceptive practices. Another proposes a new poultry grower tournament system rule. And a final rule clarifies that parties don't need to demonstrate harm to competition to bring action. A new pork processing plant is coming to South Dakota. Holstone Farms plans to build a more than $500 million facility in Sioux Falls. The company is owned by 200 pork producers in the region. They purchased 170 acres in northeast Sioux Falls near Benson Road and Interstate 229. The facility would open in 2025 and initially employ more than 1,100 people. Holstone began in 2016 as a vision of Pipestone and led to acquiring the Hormel plant in Fremont, Nebraska. And USDA and the state of South Dakota have finalized a cooperative interstate shipment agreement. It provides a path for selected state inspected meat and poultry processors to ship their products across state lines. Under the CIS agreement, the state may inspect meat in selected establishments for shipment throughout the U.S. Ahead on Ag Week TV, a Fargo lab is using DNA in the fight against noxious weeds. And later, after a hiatus due to the pandemic, June Dairy Month farm tours are resuming. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high-velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. At Trans Systems, every day is a great day to haul beets. Our family-owned business moves more beets than anyone in the world. We enjoy good work and good pay, and many of us have been here for decades because it's a place where our opinions are heard and our accomplishments are seen. We're your home every day and can take summers off. Here, our safety and yours matter most. Trans Systems, a sweet haul in the Red River Valley since 1983. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. Crop conditions slipped again this week in the region, even with needed rain in some of the drought areas. Is there any trend change in the forecast? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. 
Fairly significant pattern change. June was humming along at one of the warmest in decades, at least back to 1988. In fact, in some parts of the northern plains, the first, oh, 10 days or so of June were some of the warmest on record. And now suddenly, when things were looking like it was going to become one of those terribly hot summers for the northern plains upper midwest, we've seen a much cooler weather pattern take over. The heat has not left the building. It's just shifted. It's now over the Rockies and the southwestern states. We'll take a look at that and where it's going to stay. And with this shifting pattern, the storm track has definitely shifted bringing good news for farmers in the Corn Belt. Here's the jet stream today, kind of meandering around. This ridge of high pressure out in the west is there, and it's uh, largely been responsible for lowering or pushing the jet stream a little bit southward. So gone is the Grand Ridge that brought hot temperatures into North Dakota, Saskatchewan, places like that. The hot weather is now in the central and southern plains and the southwest, and some of that weather this week is exceptionally hot. After all, it was exceptionally hot in Montana and North Dakota for parts of early June, so now it's going to be exceptionally hot down in the southwest. With the jet stream coming out of the northwest, this folks in summertime, this is a stormy pattern. Not necessarily along this entire trek, but especially where it curves around and in, where the warm, where the cool air is delivered into the warm and muggy air of the Corn Belt, you tend to get big storms, and we'll see that bear itself out in just a minute. The only really chilly weather in the continent will be up around Hudson Bay. And that won't be all that bad, but there will be plenty of cool weather in that region. The southern Rockies, the southwest, the deserts of the southwest, they're going to bake. The southeast will grab gradually start heating up finally this summer, but uh, most of the Corn Belt and Midwest will just be seasonally warm, sort of average temperatures, no scorchers. The scorchers will come up briefly from time to time into the central plains, but it'll be mostly focused in the southwest. In western Canada, the Canadian Rockies will be much warmer than average underneath this pattern. As we slip toward the end of the month of June and into the first few days of July, I think the pattern just gets reinforced. There'll be some some fairly cool weather dipping down into North Dakota and the Great Lakes as the cool weather drops down from Hudson Bay. The hot stays south and southwest. So as the cold air drops down into the northern plains and Midwest where it meets that muggy air, we're going to get a lot of storms through uh, the traditional Corn Belt. Uh, eastern Iowa through Ohio, there'll be scattered showers and thunder showers bringing some drought relief into the northern plains as well. It'll be gradual, it'll take its time, but we should see the drought conditions improving and really shifting to the western part of the United States. The Summers Manufacturing Spring 2022 Advance Order Program is on now. Lock in pricing and secure your farm equipment needs for next spring. Confirm your order by June 30th to take advantage of these discounts. All Summers equipment qualifies, including our new Super Coulter Samurai, the innovative VRT Renegade, and the best built, best backed land rollers in the industry. Don't wait until fall. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more. At Trance Systems, every day is a great day to haul beets. Our family-owned business moves more beets than anyone in the world. We enjoy good work and good pay, and many of us have been here for decades because it's a place where our opinions are heard and our accomplishments are seen. We're your home every day and can take Summers off. Here, our safety and yours matter most. Trans Systems, a sweet haul in the Red River Valley since 1983. Hi, neighbor! Oh, I know you didn't ask me to, but I grabbed your mail for you while you were out of town. Uh, this one was marked urgent, so I opened it for you. It's your bank statement. Are all those charges right? I highlighted the bottom of page three where you can sign up for e-statements. This isn't my mail. <laughs> e statements with Cornerstone Bank. Keep nosy neighbors at bay by switching today. The future of your farm depends on storage, and no one does storage solutions better than Gateway Building Systems. Gateway Building Systems is the number one Brock Bend dealer in the U.S., is locally owned and provides turnkey convenience with factory direct product, complete design services, and in-house construction. Gateway Building Systems will provide you with Brock Solid bins, grain dryers, millwright services, lags, towers, and conveyors. Take advantage of discounts on our Brock Solid bins. For more information, go online to gatewaybuilding.com. 
Egg Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join me, Mike Speaker, from the Egg Week editorial team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you are involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Egg Week podcast is the show for you. Egg Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Scientists are using groundbreaking technology in the fight against noxious weeds and other crop pests. The National Agriculture Genotyping Center offers DNA testing on weeds like Palmer amaranth and water hemp and other pests. They also do a lot of testing on honeybees. It opened on the NDSU campus in 2016, and it's the only one of its kind. Research scientist Zach Bateson says currently their focus is on testing for Palmer amaranth. He says Palmer is one of several pigweed species with different herbicide resistance, so they're developing tests to detect the different traits. That will help growers determine which herbicides will be most effective. Palmer amaranth has only been detected over the last few years in the state. It could have been around longer, but we just don't know. And so right now, since it's early in the stage of infestation, or at least early in the stages of reporting, now is the best time to go out, find these populations, and figure out what they're resistant to. The hopes is that a grower would spend a little bit of money to know what's in their field before they have to spend a lot of money to try to fix it. Test results can be ready in just a few hours. You can get more information from your county agent or go to genotypingcenter.com. Herbicide applicators were busy in the fields again early this week, but have been challenged by the weather and now shortages of some crop protection products. SDSU's Paul Johnson says the biggest shortfall is in the growth regulator market, which includes 2,4-D. So applicators and farmers are using a mix of products to achieve the same results or substituting a generic product. It's tied to the historic freeze in Texas. Some big plants in Texas were down for about a month. Uh, in the period that they would normally be uh, finishing up, and uh, we're in the supply chain, we're at the end of the supply chain. He says it's also difficult to get herbicide products in bulk. The good news is it's not driven prices up. After a hiatus last year, June Dairy Month farm tours are resuming in South Dakota, including Modak Dairy near Goodwin. They're celebrating 30 years and carried on a tradition they've held nearly all the years they've been in operation. Modak Dairy co-owner Greg Mose says the public was excited to come back out and see the 2,000 cow facility. We're right around that 70 million pounds of milk is what we uh, ship to Valley Queen. He says they want to show consumers what dairy farmers do to bring them safe and nutritious milk and dairy products and answer questions like how they use antibiotics in milk production. It can't be unloaded if there's antibiotics in it. It's tested before it's unloaded. There is no, it's parts per million on, on the antibiotics. Modak has grown substantially from the 200 cows they started with in 1991, and most talked about the biggest change he's seen in that time. Oh, technology, you know, from the cows, from the DNA on the calves, from uh, even all the equipment we use. Now Modak is adding a new replacement heifer unit that's still under construction. And it's uh, working back on the same cow comfort, uh, the livestock comfort we do with cows. Cross vent, we can control our feed. And nine-year-old Ryder Peterson was excited to share what he learned about how milk is produced. They eat this ration that will, like, mix their body together and then, like, produce some milk. He and his friends got the full dairy experience as they were treated to a range of dairy products, including grilled cheese. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, taking the story of pork production to the public. The Summer's Manufacturing Spring 2022 Advance Order Program is on now. Lock in pricing and secure your farm equipment needs for next spring. Confirm your order by June 30th to take advantage of these discounts. All Summer's equipment qualifies, including our new Super Coulter Samurai, the innovative VRT Renegade, and the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Don't wait until fall. Talk to your Summer's dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more. Challenges, we all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? 
If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. At Northstar Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009 with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. Growing up as a kid, Gateway was always the grain bin building and the grain handling people that were out in our area. One of the reasons we chose to go with Gateway was they're the leader in the industry and they are the number one Brock dealer in the United States. We've really liked the Brock design and some of the designs that Gateway has come up with throughout the years. My best advice would be to just push your trust in them and let them uh, come up with the design that's going to fit your needs. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. There could be a lot of misconceptions about animal agriculture, but a program helps train producers to be effective spokespeople for their industry. As NOAA Fish reports, Operation Main Street trains pig farmers, vets, and others in pork production to share information with the public. We find that audiences outside the pork producing states have no idea about pork production. Al Idson is changing that, one audience at a time. Since he and the National Pork Board launched the Operation Main Street program in 2004, they've trained 1,400 speakers around the U.S. Dietitians, nurses, you know, nutrition educators, really across the country. We've had a good reception from community and civic groups who are interested in the idea of where does food come from. Rachel Endicott worked as an extension beef cattle specialist in Montana before joining the program. She says it's gratifying reaching so many people, especially by going virtual over the past year. We've now evolved to the ability to have a virtual barn tour at South Dakota State University, as well as have both our speakers and our audiences be virtual, so we can kind of take it anywhere uh, across um, the U.S. and beyond. Idson says they're happy to spread the story of pork production. Just telling what the industry is doing right, uh, helping explain the basics and the importance of keeping animals healthy and antibiotic usage and make it in a straightforward, common sense way where anybody could understand. In Des Moines, Iowa, this is Noah Fish for Ag Week. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have yourself a great and safe week.